old school bodybuilding clothing company. If leg day was yesterday, and now you're wondering why toilets are so damn low, you are definitely old school. If you're the only athlete at your gym that knows there's a contest today, and it's to see who trains the hardest, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to RX Muscle's Iron Road to the Olympia 2020, brought to you by Species Nutrition and Old School Bodybuilding. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is our first IFBB Men's Physique Pro from the country of India. He's also the first man to go to the Olympia from India. Uh, he's got a tremendous, tremendous following on social media. And I'm really happy to get him here today and learn a little bit about him because I didn't know that much until we talked you know, prior to this interview. The man I'm talking about is Bhuvan Chawan. Welcome to the show. Hey, Dave. How you doing, man? Good, good. How you doing? Good. Now, you, uh, you're originally from India, from Delhi, and you came over here about nine years ago up to Canada to go to school. Yeah. Hadn't even worked out, right? No. And yeah, so I started working out at 18 when I came here for the first time, yeah. You come from a family of like people who are very well educated, PhDs, and you know, yes. so they expected you, we're gonna send him to Canada, I wanna get him to get a great education, and, and, and probably thought you'd come back there, right? Probably a nightmare they thought of. <laughs> <laughs> like they were like, I'll do my engineering, do my MBA, get settled down, come back, and That's then do right. something around those lines. They, <laughs> they, little did they know that was the biggest mistake they ever did, letting you go, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get involved in bodybuilding in Canada? Um, so I, I, I always liked, uh, body, like physiques and stuff. Like I remember the first time I really liked a physique was of Goku from Dragon Ball Z. So I was like, oh, a human can look like that. And then I was looking at some Bollywood actors that they had some decent shape, like, you know, with abs and models and stuff. Right. So I was like, I just want some abs. I just want to look like a model. Sure. So when I got here, um, obviously I was 17 and it was my first time getting some freedom. I'm like, I want to impress some girls. I want to get some abs and I just want to <laughs> do that. So I was always into sports. So I had like decent abs. I was very, uh, like an ectomorph basically. Right. And then I couldn't play any sports here because of the engineering course load. So um, then I thought, what can I do? So I, I had no idea what gym is. I had no idea what weights are. So then I started working out in the dormitory gym by looking at people. I went there, did a machine here and there, then went back home, like, you know, saw some videos how to do it and kept doing it over and over. And it took me a whole year. I injured so many times. Like I had injured my bicep, I injured my shoulder. Did, were, were, you the no guy, like, the, were you the guy at the gym where like people were like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. He's going to kill himself in the gym. Yeah, and the gym was literally a very <laughs> small ghetto gym. It was a dormitory gym. So there was only like six, seven machines and some dumbbells. So I was by myself most of the time. Right. So I would see some people doing it. I'll try to mimic it. And I'll just, just over and over. So I was always underconfident to going to the main university gym. I went there once and I came back. I was like, this is like, I don't, I'm, I don't even know where I am. Right. And then it just motivated me more because when I came back, I'm like, holy shit, this is not me. Like I've been good in sports. I want to do it. So then I started learning more and more watching all the videos, YouTube, bodybuilding.com forums back in 2011. That's all I had, bodybuilding.com forums. Yeah. And then I learned and then I built something. And then one year, two year, I was literally, this was consuming all my time. Like after engineering, all I did was studying. <laughs> you probably and should have just hired someone to teach you how to work out. I mean, it probably would have been a lot easier, right? I had no idea how this all works. I had zero idea. And then also <laughs> on student budgets, I came in on scholarships. So I mean, I didn't really have that much money to spend on supplements or anything. Gotcha. So I remember I was eating for protein. I was eating tuna cans. So six tuna cans a day. That's it. I, we all did. We all did that at one time or another. So don't feel bad. <laughs> so that was, that's how it started. And yeah. then slowly and slowly grabbed hold of it and built a good base. And then once I graduated in 2015, I thought everybody was telling me have the structure because men's physique came out a year yeah. ago. They're like, I had the structure to do it. I'm like, okay, let's give me a challenge. And I like working out to so do it. Sure. And I won all my shows as an amateur and made it to a pro in like one year. 
Wow. What Now, what show did you win to turn pro? So it was the Ben Vita Legacy Cup in uh, Canada in 2017. Gotcha. Now, it, the, the funny thing is, the interesting thing is, at that time, you had no social media whatsoever, right? Yeah, I was like barely, I had my Instagram, but never posted anything. I mean, I was so busy with other stuff that I sure. didn't even know what social media, like why would I even be on social media? Right. Things I used to watch were on YouTube. Greg Plett and Rob Richards were the guys I used to watch. May you rest That's it. Yourself. I had no idea what bodybuilding is. I had no idea what bodybuilders are, except mm. for Arnold. And then slowly and slowly, 20, when I started competing, I was like, okay, this is what men's physique is. Sure. This is what bodybuilders are. This is what Kai Greenfield Heath are. <laughs> And then in like three, four, in the last three, four years, I've only learned about everybody. How did you learn how to even do like the turns from YouTube videos? Like, yeah, it was just, just YouTube. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah. amazing. You, you can, you can uh, educate yourself on YouTube nowadays from all the uh, stuff that's out yeah, there. Yeah, like forums and YouTube, because even in Canada here, I live in a, not a very big city. It's Calgary and Alberta, and there's not many people doing this. Even right now, I'm probably the only pro here. So you don't see people doing this, right. recording videos, going to the gym and having a camera person, taking pictures and all. So it's everything new. It's very unique. So when you win, when you win this Border States Pro Show, you got to be, did you expect to go in there and win? I mean, that had to be like, had to blow your mind, right? So last year was a struggle. Like last year I did five shows. It took me five shows to win a show. I came second and third pretty much in every show, but it was just so close. Every right, but top three second. is still really good. I mean, you, you had to know you were yes. right there, you know, at that point. Yes, but in three months when I did five shows, it took a beat, like it took a really high toll on my body, mentally, physically, emotionally. And I was like, why am I not winning? I won all my shows as an amateur. And I know you can relate to it. Like when a person does really well as an amateur, and then you're like, what the hell is going on? I can't even win a pro show. Well, you know, what so people don't realize is that you, now you're going against all the guys that, that, that won, you know, every show already. Exactly. You know? So it, it's it's harder. And yeah. I didn't know that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go all in, all in, all in. And then I think the last show I did was Vancouver Pro, and I won that one. And that qualified me the points. The total points qualified me for the Olympia last year. So that last year was tough. This year, going into the show, I was very confident that, hey, I've done it before. I know I've made the improvements, and I will go in and bring my best. Yeah. Obviously, you want to be the winner, but I expected myself to be like top two or three. I had another show plan that if I don't make it, there's a Chicago pro that was in my radar, and I would have done that. So you, you felt very confident coming in this year after you had gone to, having gone to the Olympia the year before yes. that, hey, you know what? I have what it takes now to win a pro show. Yes, yes, yes. After last year, I was way more confident. Yeah. What was your weight difference from when you first turned pro to like the last show you did? How much? How much muscle so, did you gain? Pro, I was one eighty five, and then this time on stage, I was uh, two hundred. Wow, so that's a that's a lot of muscle. Yeah, yeah. So you're uh, where would you ideally like to be? I mean, is this a good weight for you, or do you want to put more muscle on? I feel like a good weight for me for stage would be two ten. Yeah. So our next year or like the year after that, I definitely would want to be 210, but I've never really had a really good off season. I've been competing continuously since 2016, having only four to six months between my uh, prep time and off season time. So since then I put on like five to six months muscle every right. year in that time period. Now when you start an Instagram, okay, or really start focusing on social media and you have no followers and you go from yeah. no followers in two years to almost 400,000 followers you have now, is, does that blow your mind? I mean, that that's almost more of a mind blowing than than the fact that you want a pro show. So, Dave, I had to plan it all out. I'm an engineer, so I plan everything out. <laughs> so when I had a whole plan of action, um, when I quit my job, I knew that this is something I want to do. But how is this going to pay my bills? So, uh, oh, so uh, before I, before you go on, when you quit your job as an engineer, yeah. did your parents lose their mind? Oh yeah, they were not sure, but they, they knew I have a security. They're like, okay, we, let's give you one year yeah. and you have all this time. And if you fail, like I had savings and stuff for me. So I knew that I, right. I have savings for the time being. And if I fail, I can always go back and there's a job waiting. Yeah. Or I can go back to school and finish my MBA. Gotcha. gotcha. So um, I had a plan of action in 2017 in May when I quit. I was like, okay, this is how I'm going to go forward with it. I'm going to start taking on some plans for coaching. I'm going to start getting some photographs taken from photographers, start promoting myself. Um, it didn't happen fast. It took me like almost a year after that to get a sponsor who was paying me $400 a month. That's it. Right. But I only had like 42,000 followers by then. 
So then 2018 came uh, and 2018 and 2019 is when I really, really like put in a lot of money into videos and photographs. And like I did my whole prep for Olympia, I wrote to Olympia. I flew in my friend videographer to LA to film the whole thing while I was training with my coach. A uh, lot of photos, a lot of videos, YouTube, Instagram. And then when you start winning shows yeah. and you know how to promote yourself, things align. So right. that's what happened. Like I kept doing shows, but I was also promoting the hell out of pictures, professional pictures and videos. So you think, together. so you really, th hold on, this is important because I think from a marketing standpoint, people can take a lot of advice from this. So you feel that you actually hired professional people to do your videos and take pictures of you and you feel that helped get you more of a social media following because of that? For sure. See, I'm a competitor. I didn't, I wasn't really an influencer. So as a competitor, if you're doing well at shows and you're able to highlight your journey, like share what you're going through, then people will watch it and then they're going to share it. And when they share it, it, expo it exponentially grows. Right. So that's kind of what happened. As I won the pro when, between Vancouver Pro and Olympia, there was, I think, eight weeks of time period. And I had two posts every day since then to the Olympia. And that grew my falling to almost like 150,000. Wow. From uh, 60,000. That's cool. That's cool. Now, and then, you know what? People might think, wow, he has all Indian fans. No, it's it's about 50-50 split. So. Yeah, so like 55% is my Indian following, and then the 45 is from the other side of the world. So you got the whole world watching you, basically, which is great. I mean, because that just goes to show that what whatever you're doing is resonating with people from all over the place, you know? For sure. And I feel that's important too because right. just having the Indian polling is not really going to do anything for me on this side of the world. Now, how do you monetize that? How do you take your, your 400,000 almost followers and, and make money from that? Like if, if, and once again, I'm, I'm doing this just to, so the people who are watching this maybe can use your formula. So the companies are only going to sponsor you if you have something to offer them. You can have 2 million followers and if, they, if they're not engaged following, if they're not buying the products and if they don't believe in you, that's the most important thing. They need to believe in you. Right. You're not going to be, they're not going to be paying you. So for me, my sponsorships, as I said, I started at $400 a month. That's it. But to get from there to making a full time living out of it, right. it took continuous six month renewals on contracts. And how do you do that? By, by showing your worth that, hey, this is how much sales I'm getting you. This is what my worth is. People believe what I say. People, because I have, I am loyal to sponsors. Like I've been only with one sponsor for like three years. Mm -hmm. And then my clothing sponsors also is the same thing. So you show the loyalty, the people see that, and then the same company will pay you more and more. And then you'll get a whole swarm of other companies trying to sponsor you. Right. Now, do you have like a code you give out like for your companies that you represent and tell people here, use this, my code and you'll get this discount? Is that, and then? Yeah, so these days all the companies are doing that to, you know, make sure that people, that the athletes they sponsor are uh, worthy of it. So for me, my, my code is Bhuvan, my first name B-H-U-W-A-N. Yeah. For all the sponsors, I have Jack Factory, I have Father Sons, and then I recently just joined Dark Sport as well. Gotcha. Okay, well, you know, it looks like you're doing it right. You're going to the Olympia off a win at the border states. Um, you're obviously representing Canada and India, and I think that you know you have a very big fan following. You're doing it right. You're showing people that you can make a living in this business if it's something you really love, and I think that uh, that should be admired. So congratulations on that, and uh, best of luck at the Olympia. Thanks so much, Dave. I always say there's like three P's in life you'll always have to deal with: passion, purpose, and profession. Mm. If you can make your passion your profession, and that eventually will become your purpose, you're living a great life. So I have no complaints living as a full-time athlete and influencer. Amen to that, man. I, I'm a big believer in do what you love, and you'll never work a day in your life, and you'll make a great living from it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. All right, and guys, that's going to take us to the end of another episode of RX Muscles Iron Road to the Olympia 2020, brought to you by Species Nutrition and Old School Clothing. I'm Dave Palumbo, Pabuvan, Chawan. We'll see you next time.